Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. Recently, we've been playing with the idea of meeting the chi of the earth, the chi of the, of the heavens, the yang chi of the heavens, the yin chi of the earth, and really actually getting a felt sense of that and focusing on the you know, what that actually, you know, the, the perception of, of, of that energy and, and the changes it makes in, in the body-mind whenever we, uh, when we shine a, a brighter light on one or the other. And so uh, I'd like to continue along that line, only throw in a, uh, a, a new wrinkle into, into the mix and and that is uh, learning to access the, the, the deep yin of the earth by placing your weight, your attention on your heels as opposed to the balls of your feet. So if, it, if you've been paying attention, this is... Uh, uh, I have been emphasizing for years the importance of putting your the balls, making the balls of your feet the focal point of your of your posture, of your stance. Right, whenever you're standing, you know I want you to orient around the the balls of the feet. And I have three basically strong reasons for that. And the first uh, being that that whenever you um, Whenever you do that, you feel something. That is, it is, there's a, it's a, it's a strong energy that comes through you. And, and our nervous systems are aligned, or they develop, I'm sorry, they develop uh, by orienting to the perceptible. That is, you know, the stuff that you can, you know, that you can see, feel, touch, et cetera, experience in some way. It orients toward the more toward stuff than non-stuff, and so the energy that gets produced by by putting your attention, your feeling the balls of your feet is more palpable, more um, uh, sensible than than when you don't, and the um, I guess one of the, the primary reasons is, is that it's remedial. That is by, by putting your, by aligning your central equilibrium to the balls of your feet, you're gonna get some positive feedback that you're, you're you say, oh, okay, I'm doing something. Your body mind says, yeah, but something's going on here. And it gets you, it, it, it's something, that, there, there's some, something, there's a there there. There's something that you get to you get to play with. So it's a, it remedies the tendency, at least in my observation, I would say probably 90% of the humans that I've run into have tend to have a collapsed energy field. And so much so that they're not even aware that they have an energy field. And there's a tendency to have a primarily because their weight is in their heels for the most of the time, there's, there's no, there's no uh, uh, animating force that is, that is it causing that, that expansion. Whereas when we put our weight, you know, we orient around the balls of the feet, there is this, this upward thrust of energy. It's more of a, um, like a, we call it a wood chi. That is, it's a, it's a, an upward thrust, an expansive young kind of kind of impulse, and so that that's that's a something. And whenever you're in a collapsed state, it's like you know you're just kind of pushing your body along, but you're not really feeling that 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 sense of of uh, inflation, like like a, a balloon getting blown up. You don't have that that quality there. There's more of a tendency to things move in a direction of entropy, of, of collapse. So the, um, 
by creating that, the establishing your central equilibrium by first putting your attention on the balls of your feet, you, you get this, this upward thrust, you're, you're creating a structure that is, it's noticeable. It's something that you can, you can point and say, yeah, yeah, that's it. It's also testable. It's something that, you know, if I push on someone and they have done that, they're, they're going to have a, an effortless power that is not available to them in their normal collapse state. It's, uh, it's so dramatic that it, you know, it kind of sells itself. So the um, getting that uh, uh, getting that structure first then allows you to to recognize the importance of central equilibrium, and it provides a structure that it happened. The downside of it if there is one, is that, oh, let me go, there's one third reason actually I wanted to, uh, to talk about, and that is as a martial art, that whenever you're, you get that, that young fullness, you're much better prepared to deal with, you know, whatever is happening as a martial art. So it, it's very similar to why every athletic coach is going to tell you to get in the balls of your feet, you know, when you're ready to, you're playing basketball or tennis or, or whatever. And, uh, you know, particularly say boxing, you know, if you're in your heels, you know, you're, you're, you're at a serious disadvantage. If you're bouncing on the balls of your feet, you know, that's why you skip rope, you know, you get, you get it so that you're, you have that, that reliance on that, you know, that springiness that comes from, from doing that. So as a martial art, it prepares you for, for your energy is up and it's ready to, ready to deal with whatever's coming along. And extending the martial art aspect into whatever you're doing, be it sports or just walking down the street, if you have that quality, then you are meeting life in a different way than if you are in a collapse, your field is collapsed. The downside, going back to that, is that if you get too much young, then it can have an adverse effect. It's certainly not as, I think, as adverse as, as having the collapse state, but it, it, you can get, kind of get wired up and, you, you know, it um, might have some trouble falling asleep at night or you might just feel lightheaded. I know that for me, sometimes I get, I tend to get a little lightheaded, you know, and then particularly when I wake up in the morning, it's like, whoa. And that's because there's, you know, too much chi at, and the chi is, is up. And so the, what we want to do is to accentuate the yin aspect. That is the downward thrust of the energy. And if, you know, we've done exercises where we, where we do that intentionally, but at this point, yeah, we, we've developed enough of a sensitivity to what we're doing, to the energy, that we can now focus on having central equilibrium with the weight and the heels. And to be able to perform the function of grounding the energy and allowing the, the, the water chi to descend and go down into the earth. And you're kind of flushing and you're creating this, this very profound um, uh, energetic connection with the earth, but it's, you're releasing down into it. And uh, the, the key to it though, is you need to have that yang function as well. So in other words, your, you have that expansiveness, you're reaching with your knee one, and at the same time, you're releasing downward. So the, get those poles in opposition, which then creates a, uh, an energy flow. 
And so we, uh, we want to do some exercises now where we're going to play with that and experience directly the, the, the qualitative difference in the energy and learn to control it so that we can decide which direction we want to go depending on the circumstances. And if we have too much chi, we learn how to uh, ground that and, and uh, empty that out. If we have not enough, we can crank up the valve and, and, and make it even, even more uh, 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 present. Before we go any further, any questions? Anybody? Good, good. Okay, let's go. Let's do it. Stand up, please. Okay, let's first establish our three pillars. So we're creating the structure. Feel the, feel the balls of the feet. Feel the weight spread throughout the foot, but really accentuating, accentuating the balls of the feet. Feel the toes pressing down. Not, not tense, but just feel them contacting the floor. Knees are unlocked. And you feel yourself sinking down into, into your legs, into the earth, feel kind of dissolving into the, uh, into the earth. At the same time, you reach with the crown of your head and tuck in the chin, open the jade pillow gate. So you're reaching upward, connecting to the yang chi of the heavens. At the same time, you're sinking into the earth, feeling the yin chi of the earth rising. Relax your lower back and drop your sacrum. Allow your pelvis to level out. Reach a little bit with your elbows, opening the shoulder joints. Point your index fingers and feel the energetic coherence. Push away from the earth and then spiral down and turn. Feel yourself releasing hip tension. And just pause for a moment and feel into the energy in your body, feel it in your hands, feel throughout the whole body mind. And breathe, feel your breath. Feel yourself relaxing into, into your structure. At the same time, creating a structure by raising the crown, creating a structure that supports this energy flow. Now let's Keeping that central equilibrium, we're going to shift the focus and shift back into the heels and sink down. And notice the qualitative difference in the, in the chi whenever you are uh, grounding through your heels. Feel the downward movement of the chi. 
you can think of this as water chi kind of flowing down, down into the earth. And the upward pull is more of a wood chi, an expansive chi. But you still have that central equilibrium. Opening the, the vertebrae, feel yourself lengthening the vertebrae. Okay. Even as you sink down. Yeah. Bring your weight back to the balls of your feet, primarily. So you're feeling that and feel the, feel the difference there. Feel the energy getting excited and excitable. This is more of a young expression. Reach with your elbows, reach with the fingers, bend the wrist and reach with the wrists. And very slowly reach up and forward, up and out, and feel the heaviness of your arms as you do this. Keep your, you know, your weight centered over the balls of the feet as you do that. Reach with the fingers, open between the shoulder blades. Feel that expansion. Down to the elbows. Keep your weight over the ball of your feet as you do this. Feel, feel the space as you move through it. Feel the energy that is being generated. And the wrist reach, keep the weight over the balls of the feet. Feel the resistance of the space as you're moving through it. It's like you're moving through a swimming pool. Reach with the fingers. Expansion, opening. down to your elbows, down to your wrists. We're doing this a very deliberately simple exercise here, just so we can focus primarily on the chi. We're not having to think so much about what we're doing. So we can really just dive right in and feel that. We're honing our eye of spirit, our ability to perceive that which extends beyond the rational and the, and the, and the five senses. One more time, bend the wrists, reach, let go even more. What's the least amount of effort you can use to lift those arms, reach with those fingers. Feel the fullness, the tingling, the pulsing, the electricity gets generated. Reach down to the elbows.
Feel the, the fullness of the yang chi in the body. Now shift into your heels and notice what happens to that chi. Feel the energy moving down through your feet into the earth. You still want to have that your center of equilibrium. You're reaching with the crown of the head. You're still vertical. Your body's finding the, the most efficient way to stand and hold. Now it's the energy is moving down. Now keeping your weight in your heels, we're gonna do this with the yin and the wrists, reaching. Very soft, very relaxed, the fingers. Feel that downward pull. Hands come down, sink. There's a qualitative difference, even if you can't describe it to yourself, there's a, a different quality to the energy. And you're just going to feel into that. You don't need to don't need to construct a narrative about it, just feel it. And the wrists and reach, keeping the weight in the heels. Feel yourself sinking deeper, deeper into the earth. Same time reaching with the crown of your head. One more time. That's the least amount of effort. Feel the heaviness, the density. Now, even though the yin chi is more non-stuff, at least perceptually, the feeling of it is more stuff, the effect of it. The body-mind gets very, very solid, very dense. Now we're going to mix them. As you rise, go to the balls of your feet. So, sink into the balls of your feet, reach for the wrists, elbows, feel that expansion, opening.
and sink into your heels, reach down with the elbows, the wrists dissolving. Balls to your feet. This elbows, fingers, reach, expansion. Young. Heels, elbows, wrists. Fingers. Yeah. One more. Pause your feet. Least amount of effort. Feeling that the chi is doing the work. Elbows, this heels sink. Stay in your heels. And feel that yin chi. Now without moving, Feel the, the potentiality of the movements, yin and yang, without thinking about it. Just feel into that. You're, you have a, a strong memory at, the, at a deep level of what those feel uh, feel like so you you don't have to think about it just hold space for that quality I feel the balls of your feet and hold that, hold space for the potentiality from this posture. And just be aware of the qualitative difference in the two energies. Now back to the heels.
into their elbows, their wrists. With your weight in your heels, arms are rounded, very relaxed. Reaching with the elbows so your shoulder joints open, reaching with the crown. Weight in the heels, sinking deeper and deeper into that yin. And this posture, this is good for cleansing, for clearing energy. Let go of your thoughts. Let's feel into your body. Take your palms down, press down. As we get familiar with the quality of the energy, the yin chi becomes as palpable as the yang chi. It's a different flavor. Each breath, find yourself letting go a little more. Releasing. Step in. Deep breath. And disappear the chi. Dissolve into the emptiness. Please take a seat. Uh, Rick, 
wow, what uh, time travel. Uh, when you started, I was brought back to my very first job away from home at a place called Farm Camp Lowy in Windsor, New York, where the weather changed as often as your mind. And rains would pour down and we would suddenly get all these amazing on the paths that we took in the woods, we would get these amazing waterfalls. And I remember I was like 15, 16 years old and I came to one of the waterfalls and I placed myself under it so the water was going down my back. Then I slowly moved backwards until it flowed over me. That was the first sensation I felt when we did this. Then the first major part I played in a summer theater group in A Man for All Seasons, I was the leading character's uh, helper, young helper. And I had my arms out and other people in, in the cast would put robes, heavy royal robes over my arms. And that's the second sensation I got. And from then on, it was just, I was, I was not lost in time. I was traveling through time, mm. feeling all these uh, differing sensations, trying to find, find the balance and accept and embrace all the changes and all the sameness and seeing the differences. Wow. Uh, yeah, just famo. Uh, <laughs> I have I have a question. I'm, I want the I want the others to talk now, but at the end, remind me. I have a question about how I can use the shifting from ball to heel in my morning regimen. Good, but, good. Yeah, please, Definitely. Valerie Scott, talk. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I was very happy in the beginning when you uh, said, you know, don't don't try to create the narrative. Don't look for anything, just experience, because that's where I was going. You know, it was like, OK, what am I feeling different? So I just stopped that and just went with it. And uh, I got to got to say it was a bit sacrilegious you know, to go from the balls of the feet to the heels. It was like. <laughs> I've been doing this for too long. <laughs> um, but, you know, as we went through it, and then especially going from the balls of the feet, raising the arms, and then to the heels of the feet as they were lowering, uh, and the difference became more it's subtle, but more pronounced. I mean, I could differentiate better. It was like, oh, that that's this sensation. This is what I'm feeling. Um, and when we were done, it was like, I got to walk. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> um, uh, very interesting. It was very interesting. The, the Using especially the combination of the two. Um, it's like, doing more of the yang, being in the balls of the feet, you know. Yes, it, it is more expansive. And then being in the heels, the marked difference in the weight in my body was uh, what I noticed the most. Being in the heels, I was just like moving rock. I was a moving rock, a flexible rock, but moving rock. And it, it, didn't have that same quality. I'm not going to even try to put a word to that, you know, because it wasn't extremely light coming up um, because I still had, I don't know if I want to say residual of being so yin, but um, there was, you know, yes, very much different. Um, and I got this rock mouth that doesn't want to move anymore. <laughs> <laughs> A, a very interesting uh, concept, very interesting, um, and practice uh, beyond concept. Great. Thank you. That's great. Um, so, yeah, I had the same 
problem. Like it was really hard for me to stay in my heels because you know my body kept saying, "No, this is not how we do this." <laughs> <laughs> So uh, yeah, I had to, I had to fight that for for quite a while, but and my thighs were burning anytime mm -hmm. I was in my heels because I'm not used to that, I guess, or something. Um, I tell you, one of the um, most helpful instructions that you've been giving more lately is feel the chi move the you know have the chi move the body. When I can really let that happen, it's it's really really another another. Uh, no level. Beautiful. Yeah. I could actually feel um, going from, you know, front to back. I, I want to say feel, I, I don't know, sense, I guess, would be the closest word. I could sense the light, like light, the light of the yin, of uh, the yang, and the dark of the of the yin. It was a really interesting mm -hmm. feeling. Interesting. Wow. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Um, some other things, but I don't remember what they were. They'll come to me in a second, probably. Um, um, yeah, also, um, um, at first, like, like like you said, when I, at first when I moved into my heels, it just felt like everything went away. It just felt like empty. But as we did it, then I got, like you said, I got the flavor of the the different flavors of the two energies and I could really feel the difference. Beautiful. Beautiful. Cool. Good. Good. That that that's that's helpful. Because it's yeah you know, it, it it's more of a a nothing than a something, you know, to to a a rational mind that's looking for for stuff. And then you know to actually you start to notice it by its effects on on the body, it's like, oh, the more insubstantial I become, the more substantial the body becomes. Like, you know, paradox. It's like, it's like huh? <laughs> but it, it 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 seems to work that way. But um, and this is an introduction. Ideally, what we're going for is to become so familiar with the energies that doesn't matter where your weight is that's that's our you know that's the doorway in right now but once we're inside then we make friends with the energies themselves and that's a whole different level of of sophistication in terms of of your your kung fu because your 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 eye of spirit is it has been developed to uh, a degree where such things are uh, as real as as your hand. You know, it's a, it becomes oh okay. This is this is what we're going for here. So being able to see with three eyes, eye of flesh, eye of mind, eye of spirit, then enables us to to navigate through this multi-dimensional reality in a way that is incomprehensible to a strictly rational mind locked into five senses. You're starting to cultivate all that woo-woo stuff that, uh, that we read about. You know, it's like, oh, okay. But guess becomes, it's familiar. You don't have to go to a mountain in Tibet to do it, you can do it you know, in your living room, which is kind of fun. Um, so yeah, so you had a question before, before uh, Rick about uh, how to incorporate that into your morning practice. Right, what I, ever since you introduced going back on the heels and I felt the sensation and I really enjoyed it because it was the same yet different than being on my, my uh, ball, on the footballs. Um, I have incorporated it, but as the climax, I mean, I do my uh, 45, uh, half hour, 45 minutes of self-healing and the rest of it. But then at the very end, when I, when I do the final routine, check my balance and get into the disappear the chi, I save going to my heels to the very end of disappearing the used spent chi 
Then I go back on the heels and let the chi disappear. Before I was emptying it, going back to my heels, I've let it just flow out. And that has been pretty cool. But now my question is, again, on the basis of what you've already said, just be very aware of what's happening. When do you think is the best time if I'm going to go back on the heels several times during my routine? Um, when should I do that? What's the optimum time to do that? Um, that, that's a really good question. I'd say at this stage of the game, which is kind of an introductory phase, right, is you first want to establish your structure. So you want to get, you know, you want to get young, you want to pump up the, the balloon to get started, right? You want to have something to, something to work with. And, uh, and then after you do, then you start to say, you start to play with it. You say, okay, which direction do I want to go now? And you will develop a sensitivity to like, okay, I know that if I keep cranking the volume up louder, louder, louder in terms of my chi, I have a recourse where I can bring it down. So I can, so one doesn't, one's not afraid of too young. If one has, one has a, a familiarity and a, um, uh, uh, a sense of competence with one's, one's yin chi, then it's like, okay, I can, I can turn that volume all the way up and then I can go to silence, you know, and, and, be, and by being familiar with both extremes, one then can start to fill in all the stuff in between and kind of have a sense of where it all fits. And you start to own this stuff. It's not just this serendipitous event that just happens, you know, every now and then. It's like, no, no, I can, I control my chi, right? It's not something that's happening to me. It's something that I am putting there. And at the same time, it's also you're plugging into the big chi, which you don't control. You know, all you can do is, is say, hey, big chi, how about, how about a, a taste? <laughs> you know, and then you, uh, you take in as much as you can tolerate. But you, can, you control the gate. You control the valve, how much you're willing to let in and, and, and let out. You had something? Well, yeah, I was just going to say it dawned on me that um, the trick in getting back on your heels, the trick is in getting, putting your weight on your heels without losing your structure. Right. Without losing your central equilibrium. Right. Because if you still have your central equilibrium, then you're just changing the quality and direction of the energy. Right. But you're not collapsing. Because a lot yeah. of people just go on their heels and collapse. Right. But if you shift to your heels without collapsing, maintaining central equilibrium, then you can really feel that the energy as opposed to the lack of energy because I collapsed. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Well, I believe I, I don't collapse at all. I, I, can, I suppose I can contribute it to my, my theatrical background as, as you know, being in musicals and dancing because I took to the going on my heels just like, oh, old friend and going back and forth. It's, I mean, I, I play around on my, on my footballs, on my heels, and on my bubbling well now. Nice. Everything, everything is a welcome uh, visit. So I'm just dancing. So <laughs> I, I never collapse. I mean, it's always just like, wow, that's great. Wow, that's also great. I mean, how can I use this to continue to right. help myself heal more? Right. Yeah. So right. I will... Beautiful. Be aware of it. Yeah. Great. Scott. So um, on along the same lines, you know, I've been kind of working with the yin and the yang in my form and it's, you know, I kind of get similar, not quite the same, you know, similar feeling to what we were doing, but not the same. So any suggestions for doing this with form or 
Absolutely. So uh, as you play with this stuff, you start to develop an awareness of what's what do I need right now? You know, what, what type of energy do I need right now? Do I need a young expansive energy? Or do I need a, uh, a yin relaxing energy? And, and so you get to get to play with that. So, you know, and then you get to combine the energies. You know, one of the things that, you know, we could, uh, we could do is say like combine, you know, the, uh, the kidney chi with the liver chi. So we have water. So you're doing your Tai Chi form in a very watery way, but with this, this, uh, the liver chi, which is kind of, um, as Master Young calls it, a happy anger. Oh, nice. So, you know, there's a, there's a, yeah, you know, there, there, there's an, it's got an edge to it and, and, a, and an expansive structure and it's confident and it's ballsy and, and, and you have that at the center, but, uh, and, but there you have the watery chi floating on top of that. And so then, you know, you get these, these two working together. So then you get to play, there's infinite variations that we can, we can play with these energies as we get more familiar with them. So right now we're talking about like getting an entry level language, nomenclature, jargon, you know, a sense of, of, of the ideas that are necessary to be able to talk about these things, to organize these ideas and then say, okay, now what? Then we, say, then we, get, to, we get to explore all kinds of possibilities. And that's where the art of the martial art comes in. That's where we're saying, oh, we're getting creative with that. We're not just repeating the same patterns that somebody taught us, you know, 30 years ago, and you know, we're going through the same thing. Da, 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 da. No, no, we're exploring and we're we're seeing, oh, what else is possible in this? Valerina. Oh, interesting that you the art Lean back. You're, 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 getting, you're breaking up with that. Sorry. Okay. Um, I, I was in an event, uh, at an event a couple of weeks ago up in Berkeley. And um, there were all kind of levels of people. And there was a couple of groups that got together um, on Sunday morning and went through form. And it was very interesting to watch those people who, just like you said, they're doing what they did 30 years ago, you know? And I know I'm definitely not. Right. Um, but so it was, I mean, there were definitely other people that had their in the art aspect and they've developed and they have been expanding. Um, but it, it, yeah, it was uh, not putting any judgment on those people uh, that, you know, I didn't see doing anything any different than they had 30 years ago. And I don't know, maybe they'd look at me and they'd go, she looks the same. I don't know. But uh, yeah, it, it was an interesting observation. And I know how I feel. I know I'm not anywhere where I near where I was 30 years ago. Yeah. And this is another, another thing in the basket to play with. <laughs> it's interesting i uh, actually saw uh, uh, a uh, video i, I did uh, 30 years ago 30 i guess it was, was 30 years ago almost to the day it's like uh uh you know a, a, a taiji video there and just watching that guy doing it and saying like oh okay there's elements of that that are pretty good and there's elements that I think I do better now, you know, but it was, it was, it's good to, to have that frame of reference and you can say, okay, yeah, all right, this is, this is where, where I was, this is where I am now. And, uh, and you can kind of play with those, those things. Good to have, uh, uh, I'm happy that we live in a, in an era, yeah, a time that uh, you can easily record yourself and uh, you can compare your, your, uh, the changes you're going through. Okay, 
Well, thank you all so much. This is great. And I uh, really appreciate uh, uh, all your comments and uh, your participation. And this was fun. <laughs>